Hello everyone, and welcome back to another Eng130 video tutorial. As always, my name is Clayton, and I'll be the one narrating this video. So, in the last video, I told you guys that we're going to learn something special in the next video, which is this video, and that is how to find the angle between two vectors. And this is very important because even though it won't be a standalone question, I've always seen it a part of a question on a midterm. Always. So, it may not be worth a lot of marks because honestly, the, the process isn't that hard. But you'll probably see it, so it's a it's a good tool to have, and uh, you'll oh you'll also definitely see it in the lab. So just uh, sit back, relax, and then we'll begin. All right. So looking at this example, it's nice and short and sweet. It says we want to determine the angle between the y-axis of the pole and the wire AB. So basically, what we have in this situation is we're going to have two vectors. We're going to have let's say vector AB, which comes out like this. This is how I want you guys to think of it, because it's a little bit easier. So we're going to have vector a, b, let's say, and then we're going to have vector from a, and then we'll say o, where o is the origin here. So this is point o. So we have two vectors, and we want to find the angle between them. And I know it seems really scary because it's 3D. It seems like there's probably going to be a lot of math involved between the two. However, there is one formula you guys need to know, and this will help you solve any angle between vectors. So that is cosine of theta, and this theta right there, that is the angle between two vectors, and that is going to be equal to the first vector. So let's say we have vectors uh, r, a, b, and we have vectors r, a, c. So not exactly in this example, let's just say we have these two vectors. It's going to be equal to r, a, b, so that's a vector and something called dot. So this is called the dot product, and I'll show you guys this uh, real quick. So dot R A C, and all of that is gonna be divided by the magnitude of R A B, like this, and then times the magnitude of R A C, like this. So the only thing here that should probably scare you guys a little bit, well not should scare you guys, that probably is scaring you guys, but it shouldn't, is that dot right there, that dot product. So the dot product between vectors is, it sounds bad, but it's actually really, really, really simple. And I'll show you this right now. So let's say we have two vectors. So it's going to be, let's just say uh, vector 1, so we're just going to go R1, and it's equal to, and I'm just going to put numbers in here, so let's go 1i, minus 3j plus 6k. I'm going to do the second one in the other in a different color just so we can follow along a little bit easier. So let's say that uh, vector 2, so oops, our vector 2, and let's say that that one is equal to, uh, come on, 5i plus 7j minus 1k. So let's say that we have these two vectors. And let's just say, uh, who knows, their units are in meters. So I'm just going to swap these to meters. And I'm going to fix the sign up top. If we want to dot these two, so I'm just going to go to the just black. And let's say that we're going to want to do r1 dot r2, like so. What it's going to be equal to, and this is kind of funny, because we're taking two vectors, but we're going to take these two vectors and we're going to create one single number, a scalar. And that makes sense, because if we look back up to the top at this uh, formula above, we have to take the cosine theta of something. So we have to inverse cosine, and that has to be a number. We can't inverse cosine a vector. It's going to get really weird. But what this is, it's really, really, really nice, because if we're dotting two vectors, what we're going to do is we're going to take the i components, so we're going to take 1, oops, we're going to take 1, and we're going to times it by 5. So the two i components, and we're going to multiply them together. And we're going to take the two j components and multiply them together. So 3 times 7. And then finally, we're going to take the two k components, so 6 and negative 1, and we're going to add, multiply them together. And then after we do that, so let's say we do that, so 5 times 1 is 1, 5 plus negative 3 times 7 is negative 21, perfect, and then 6 times negative 1 is negative 6. So in the end, all we do is we add all three of those together, 
So we're going to have negative 27 plus 5, we're going to have negative 22. So negative 22 is the answer to r1 dot r2. So it's actually really, really easy. So again, I'm just going to use different colors to show this section right here. This comes from the i component times the i components. The second section right here. This comes from the j component times the j components. And then finally, the last section right here, this comes from the k component times the k component. So it's really, really not that bad. So if we have the position vectors and their magnitudes, we can solve this question and any question like this very, very easily. Now, there's one little trick that we have to know. And this works for, is that this works for all vectors. So I'm just gonna write down here to make, show you guys easier. So we're gonna go cosine of theta, and this is equal to, and this is gonna work very nicely. It's gonna be equal to, let's just go r1 dot r2 over the magnitude of r1 times the magnitude of r2. So it's equal to this, but this is also equal to, let's say, f1 dot f2 all over the magnitude of f1 times the magnitude of f2. So that's really, really nice. So it doesn't always have to be a position vector. It can be a force vector as well. And then the third one, that's equal to, and this is where it gets really nice because there's a trick here. It's equal to u1, so the unit vector, dot the unit vector 2. And then you guys are going to go, oh, but Clayton, you forgot to divide by the magnitudes. Well, we don't have to. Because keep in mind that the magnitude, oops, the magnitude of any unit vector is equal to 1. So in this case over here, we're essentially just dividing by 1 times 1, which is going to be 1. So that's a little trick with unit vectors. If we have a unit vector of our two vec so if we have our two unit vectors, we don't even have to find the magnitudes because we already know that the magnitude of the unit vectors is going to be 1. So it's really, really, really nice. Now, if you don't have to take the extra steps, I wouldn't recommend it. So for this case, if we were to find the unit vectors for these coordinates, what's going to end up happening is we're going to have to do extra steps. So I don't want to do that. I'm just going to go straight into position vectors because usually when we're finding uh, the angle between vectors, it's usually position vectors. I'm just going to be honest with you guys. It's usually position vectors that we deal with. But sometimes you'll have a unit vector and then you can just solve for it really, really quickly. So with that being said, I hope you guys kind of understand, but if not, let's we'll just pay attention to the example and hopefully it can help shine some light on everything. So if we look here, we have our two vectors. We're gonna have what I'm just gonna put as, uh, let's go, oh, I guess I'll just use the points there. So we got R from A to O as one, and then we got R from A to B as the second one. So those are our two vectors. So in order to find the angle between them, we're going to use the formula again down here. Oops, I went to eraser. And if we're using this formula, we need to know a couple things. One is the magnitude and the position vector. So let's start with the position vector because we need that vector to find the magnitude. Now let's start with the easiest one. Let's start with RAO. And this is a trick, and this is exactly why I picked this one, because there's a million questions that deal with angles between vectors, but this one's very special. And this one's special because it says it's along the x, uh, sorry, the y axis. The y axis. And if that's the case, and it's along the y axis, the first thing that we need to find is which direction are we going along the y axis. And if you look at this case, we're heading towards the negative direction. So if anything's along an axis, its position vector is just going to be 0, 0, and whatever axis it's along is 1. So let's say it's along the x-axis. Our position vector is going to be 1, 0, 0. Let's say it's along the y-axis, which is this case. What we're going to have is the position vector is going to be 0i, because it's not going anywhere in the x-direction, minus, and we're going to go 1j, 
because it's going in the negative y direction. And then finally, plus 0k. And that's going nothing into the z direction. So our units here are in feet. Position vectors need units. This is going to be feet. And then we saw this. Now this is a special case. Because if we were to take the magnitude of this vector, so it's going to be 0 squared plus 1 squared plus 0 squared, we find that the magnitude of RAO is actually equal to 1. So since this is the case, this position vector right here, RAO, that's actually the unit vector for this scenario. So RAO, that's what's nice with dealing with something along an axis, is it? Position vector is equal to the unit vector RAO if it's along an axis. Remember, this is a special case along an axis, which is why I wanted to show you this. All right, so now let's go from RAB. So this is where we're going to have to do our standard steps. So RAB, we're going to have to take the coordinates of B. Remember, we take where we end up first, and we subtract our initial position, so RA. And what we're going to have here is we're going to look for the coordinates of B. So looking over here, we see that B right here, we first go along the x-axis. So we know that B goes a total of two feet along the x-axis. We look along the y-axis next, so that's going this way. And we see that it also goes two feet along the y-axis. And then finally along the z-axis, it goes, we look how far it goes up the x-axis, but it actually, oh, sorry, the z-axis, but we find it actually goes down by two feet. So this right here is going to be negative two. And we're going to subtract the coordinates of A. So A is kind of special because we start all the way over here. And remember, the X and Z are going to be 0 because we're right on that Y axis. And we're 3 feet along, so it's going to be 0, comma 3, comma 0. And then we can throw that all in. And what we're going to get is R, A, B. I'm just going to put it over here so I don't forget. R, A, B is going to be equal to 2 minus 0. So this is going to be 2i. We're going to have 2 minus 3, so minus 1j, and then negative 2 minus 0, so minus 2k. And then what we can do next is we can find the magnitude of RAB. So this is all stuff that we've done lots before, so if this is a little bit tricky for you, I recommend going and watching our, the previous videos because we go into this uh, more in depth. So the magnitude of RAB is going to be 2 squared, plus 1 squared plus 2 squared. What happens is when we throw all of this in together, I'm just going to throw this in my calculator real quick. So 2 plus, so this is going to be 4 plus 1 plus 4. This is going to be the square root of 9, which is 3. So the magnitude is going to be 3, and of course the unit is feet, and we need units up here too. So now if we look at this formula up here, we have everything that we need to solve this. So it's really, really, really nice. So let's just begin solving it. So I'm just going to recap the formula. We know that the cosine of theta, so this is the theta that we want, is equal to R A O dot R A B. These are our two vectors, and those are in vector form. By the, and then we divide it by the magnitude of RAO, which is multiplied by the magnitude of RAB. Just put little vector hats on them. So like this. So let's just go through this one by one. So remember, if we're dotting something, what we're doing is we're taking the components of each and multiplying them together. So I'm going to do this in uh, special colors so you guys know. So first what we want to do is we want to take the 2 and multiply it by 0. So it's going to be equal to 2 multiplied by 0. Then we're going to go back here and this is going to be plus. And we'll go to a different color. The second one is negative 1 and we're going to multiply that by negative 1. So we go down here. What we're going to have is negative 1. Negative 1 times negative 1. 
And then we're going to go plus down here. So plus. And our final one, let's, uh, oh, I've already used that color. Uh, let's go pink. What right, we're going to do is we're going to go negative 2 multiplied by 0. So negative 2 and 0. And then at the bottom, so this is all divided by those two magnitudes. Perfect. And our first magnitude, RAO, we know that that is simply 1. And the second magnitude is 3, which we solved for up here. So now what we can do is we can kind of make this even more simpler. 2 times 0, we know is 0. Negative 1 times negative 1, well, we got 1 there, so I'm going to put 1. And then negative 2 times 0 is 0. And this is divided by 1 times 3, which is 3. So it's equal to 1 third. And remember that this is equal to cosine of theta. So then what we can do down here, oops, we can go theta is going to be equal to the inverse cosine of 1 third. And what we do is we can type that in our calculator. And we're going to get an angle of 70.5 degrees. 70.5 degrees. So therefore, we can state our final answer. Theta is equal to 70.5 degrees. And we're going to box it so the TA is known exactly what the mark. Don't want any confusion. Perfect. So that's how you find the angle between two vectors. So as I was saying, it's, it's not that bad. Uh, we just have to follow the one formula here. Uh, the only trick that you guys might find is the dot product. So even though it looks scary, it's actually really, really, really simple. You just multiply the i components, and then you add the multiple of the two j components, and then you add the multiple of the two k components. So it's not that bad. One trick that you'll probably run it, come across, and this will probably be in the lab, is the unit vector because unit vectors have a magnitude of 1, so it's very important in this formula because it cancels out the whole bottom, which is really, really nice. And then the final trick, of course, is it, when we don't give you a second point and we say along an axis. If that's the case, then we can just go 0, negative 1, and 0. For this case, it's the y-axis. If it was the x-axis, we can go 1, 0, 0. Or similarly, if it was the z-axis, we can go 0, 0, 1. And the magnitude of that is 1. So it goes really, really, really nicely. And I'm saying really way too much. So yeah, I hope this example is helpful. Uh, I'm going to have one more for this week. And it's going to be finding the angle between vectors again, except I'm going to make it a little bit more complex. So you guys can use it as practice, uh, stuff like that. So thank you all for listening, and I'll see you guys in the next video.